Hi, this is Wallace from Capturing Reality, and I'm going to show you how to make seamless textures from your scans. Obviously, you can make a seamless texture just by taking a photograph and then making that seamless. But the reason you might want to do it with a scan in Reality Capture is because you can bake normal and displacement maps and you can get all of this interesting surface detail. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to export a proxy mesh with just 20,000 triangles to Blender. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I don't need the full mesh, I just need the rough contours of the surface. Um, so I can put a plane there and then I'm going to bring that plane back into Reality Capture and bake my textures onto it. So first thing to do is select your simplified model and export it. Mesh model, export, dense mesh model. And I'll just export it there. And you want the RC info file. The reason for this is when you import your plane back into Reality Capture, um, I'm going to overwrite this model. And so it will use the same RC info file, so it'll be placed in exactly the right place. And also note the transformation preset is set to Blender. Let's click OK. And that's my model exported. So I'll go into Blender, click on the cube, press X, delete the cube, then File, Import, OBJ. And then navigate to your model. And there it is. It's a bit rough, but it's just to place the plane. Let's make a plane, add mesh plane. And now I'm going to press S and drag. So it's about the same size as the surface. I'm going to go down to the side and press G, move it up. So it's above the surface. From the top, I'll press G again. And just move it there. That's about right. Now tab to go into edit mode, right click, subdivide, and then I'll open this subdivide dialog and increase the number of cuts till I have it. Six by six is about right. So that's ready. Now I want to, I want to make it fit the surface as well as possible. So first I'm going to do this roughly uh, using the soft select, I'll turn on. And let's press G and Z, move it down. I'll just rolling the mouse wheel to increase the soft select. Just move it down so it's, I mean, I'm just gonna roughly get it to the surface because later I'm actually gonna be using the shrink wrap modifier to snap it to the surface. So that looks good to me. It's a lot closer. Let's move this one down. G, Z closer this one can go G Z oh maybe I'll move that other one up a bit G Z slightly more localized I don't need it to be exact but the closer I get it to the mesh the better a snap I'm gonna get G Z move that down okay I think that's close enough so now I'm going to press tab again, go into object mode. Let's add a modifier, add modifier, shrink wrap. And we have to drag in this model to the target. And there you go. It's, it's snapped it to the surface. I think that's good enough for me. So I'm going to apply the ship shrink wrap, apply, select the mesh. And then File, Export, OBJ, and then make sure you overwrite the, the model that you made previously. So I'm going to click on that OBJ, and then also I'm going to go to Selection Only, and Export. That's done, so let's go back into Reality Capture. And here's my model. And now we need to import that plane. So mesh model up. Oh, before I do that, I just want to quickly show you something. If you go to mesh color and texture in the mesh model tab, then go to settings, 
you'll see the top setting here is imported model default texture resolution. And it's currently set to 8K, which is actually what I want. But I just wanted to show you that you can import it at all of these different resolutions here. So let's import the model. It's already selected. And there's my model. If I just unfold it, you can see it's got a single 8K texture, but it's, it's black. We want to get rid of that, so I'm going to just label it black layer and now it's time to reproject so I'm going to go to scene 3d tools texture reprojection and it's already set up right so there's my original model and this is the imported model model one and I don't want a displacement layer if you do want one just enable that and then follow the same procedure that I'm going to later do with the normal map and you can also have a seamless displacement layer um, have we got color yeah we've got color reprojection okay that's ready to go let's just reproject and there we have it there is the texture reprojected something you may have noticed was that I didn't actually unwrap the imported model and that's because it already had an unwrap um, when it was imported I'll just quickly go into blender and if I go to UV editing there you can see that the uh, UVs is just a perfect square. I mean, it's odd to talk about an unwrap when you're actually just talking about a plane because obviously it doesn't really need unwrapping um, because it is a perfect square, um, which makes it ideal for baking textures. And if we go back into reality capture, I'll make a one plus two layout. I've got a 2D here. And if I just drag my normal layer down, there you can see it's a perfect square and the same with the diffuse. So now we want to export these two textures so we can take them back into Blender and make them seamless. So go to Mesh Model, then Export Dense Mesh Model and there's an option here to export just the textures. I have a folder ready, Seamless Bark Textures, although they're not seamless yet, they will be. Just save them in there. You can see the options here, texture settings, just yes. Oh, actually we do not want the black layer. Let's not have that. And then we've got the color layer and the normal layer. So let's click OK. And now we're done in Reality Capture. I'm just gonna go back into Blender. And here we are back in Blender. I'm gonna click on the cube and press X to delete the cube. And I'll make a new plane let's drag this up and make a shader editor and a new material click on principle BSDF and press X to get rid of that because it's just a little bit too complex for our needs and make a new shader diffuse BSDF it just has color roughness and normal we're only using a normal map just plug that into the surface then add texture image texture for our diffuse Go to open and then navigate to wherever your image texture is, the diffuse that you just saved, and plug that in to the color. I have the um, Wrangler, Node Wrangler add on activated. So if I click on that and then press um, Control T, I get mapping and texture coordinate um, nodes so that I can tile the texture, which I definitely will be wanting to do. Let's turn on. Uh, the view so we can see what we're doing when a render view and there's our texture and now we want to add the normal map so I'll click on my diffuse and do shift D to duplicate move it down click open and select the normal map and very important change the color space to linear the normal map and let's add just search for a normal map node. There we go. Normal map and just put that there. Color to color. Normal to normal. And in a second, there we go. We have a normal map with all the surface details. If I go to my light and then press G, move it down. And let's go and zoom in. 
click on the light again and G and Y and then if I move it backwards and forwards we've got all our surface details there let's just move it up again there we go there's our, our texture click on it so now we need to make it seamless so the first thing I'm going to do is tile it using array modifiers so we'll just tile this we just press modifier there add a modifier array and there you can see our first seam here but we also want to repeat it in this direction so add another array modifier but this time on the Y so delete the X and then put one on the Y and there we go can you see all of our seams now so let's go into texture paint to to paint out these seams I had my normal map selected you can see normal was selected but if I selected the diffuse and then go into the uh, te texture paint there you can see the diffuse map you can also select the different maps here so to get rid of the seams basically we're just going to use the clone tool and it works just like the clone tool in Photoshop so click on the clone tool there and then to sample an area rather than pressing alt like in Photoshop you press control so I'll press control here and then there you can see I'm painting over the seam and basically just do that the whole way over all your seams paint them out and also the side seams here and that'll take a while so I'll just fast forward and then we'll do the normal map afterwards and there we go that's looking seamless now so just click on the normal map and then exactly the same procedure with the normal map to make that seamless as well and there we go we now have a seamless normal and diffuse maps so the only thing left to do is you have to save these you can see by this asterisk here that it's not been saved so just click on image and then save then go back to the diffuse and again you can see the asterisk so save that one or two and now we have two seamless textures so let's go back into the layout mode now you can see it's looking seamless um, but it's on a square but one thing to watch out for is as you can see this color space changed back to sRGB so just change that back to linear it's very important for the normal map to actually work properly to be in a linear color space there we go actually I'm not 100% happy with this it looks like you can see the repeat quite well there I'm just going to go back and do another little edit on the uh, diffuse map we'll go back to the layout still in linear color space on the normal which is nice to see and there's our texture so it's not going to look great on a plane so I'll press X to delete the plane and let's add a cylinder mesh cylinder go into the side view S and Z to make it a bit more like a tree there we go and we'll add our material to it material one and there we go you can't really see it particularly well I'm going to go into world mode and add texture environment texture and I've got some HDR H HDRIs on my hard drive so I'll just uh, select one of those just plug it in and there we can see it's a lot better lit let's go back to object mode and as you can see I haven't actually plugged in the mapping to the normal map so we need those to correspond so let's plug that in and now we can start tiling it I think it's sideways so I'm gonna add 90 degree on the Z that'll do starting to look a lot more like a branch or a tree and let's just add some tiles three four there we go and as you can see it now really starts to look like a good tree texture so thank you very much for watching and if you have any suggestions for any future videos then please leave it in the comments below